But you got any questions for him? What you heard so far? Any questions? In your mind? Yeah. Any questions yeah, I mean, you got to bring him up? We're gonna give you some literature before we leave, so you can contact me, man. And if you are here like this, I see y'all every day. All brown? Yeah. All brown. Right. right. Yeah, so you can reach out to us. All right? I know you feel like you don't need nothing, don't need nobody. You know, yeah, exactly. But the most high is set. Give me, uh, give me that a second, that's a second. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I know, I'm just messing with you. The thing is, we don't want you to be out here by yourself. Yeah, we don't want you to be outside. We don't want you to be outside. Yeah, 654. Give me a uh, second. Yeah, I know. You remember back in the days over there when they used to serve? So now you're in Orlando, right? Oh, Miami. But you're from Miami, so you've been all over the place. Yeah, I travel. Right? You travel? Yeah. But the Lord has you traveling for one reason, man. Right? So you can come across and hear this truth that he promised in the last days. So all these other trips you make is all leading you up right here today. You ever heard this before? Yeah, I mean, not broken down like this. Not broken down like this, right? With this. It's Proverbs chapter 20. Uh, verse 24, man's goings are of the Lord. Hold on. Man's goings are of the Lord. You see that? Go ahead. How can a man then understand his own way? How can a man, the Lord orders our steps. Everywhere you've been in your life, the Lord set that up. We don't got free will. It's all of the most high. See that? The Lord orders your steps and set your life up so you can hear this truth today, either to receive it or reject it. Everybody's going to get an opportunity to hear this truth before the Son of Man returns. You see that? Read pictures. I want to show you something real quick. I want second address six and fifty four. For the second address, chapter six, verse fifty four. And after these, Adam also, whom thou mayest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So the Lord made everybody, and we all come from Adam. Right? And the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken. So the Lord said everybody come from Adam and the people that he chose. So the Lord created everything, but the Lord, just like if you uh, make a picture, and you got, draw a whole bunch of pictures, some of them you like, and you don't got to like everything you made. You might say, I'm going to sell this one. This came out good. I don't really like this one. You see that? That's because God created, every, created everything. doesn't mean he, he, the Lord created evil and good. Right? We. And the Moabites in the house, man. All the way over here in America. You see that? Really? Of him come we all. Of him come we all. And these people also, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. And the people you chose. Right? All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. The Lord made with the whole earth for you, brother. This, all this is yours. You see that? Go ahead. Um, and um, as for the other people. I ain't gonna tell you about these other people that he made. Go ahead. Which also come of Adam. They come from Adam too. Really? Thou hast said that they are nothing. And they even got Black Lives Matter signs up marching with you. <laughs> right? Saying it was wrong with our forefathers. It's wrong with the police do. The Lord said they got nothing. They, they told us we was nothing. But the Lord said all along they was the nothing. We? But be like unto spittle. What's spittle? Then you kind of talking to somebody and you know, a little spit come out there. You kind of like, come on, bro. That's the Lord said they like spittle. Spit. That's nothing, really. And had likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. He said the greatest, the goodest of them, the ones that are good, they like a drop that falleth from a vessel. If I got a big vessel of water and I'm running and I drop a drop, are you going to care about that drop or are you going to keep it moving? It's going to, right, it's going to evaporate by the time you turn around. So the Lord said they like a drop that falleth from a vessel, really. 
And now, O oh Lord, behold these heathen. These what? Heathen. Heathen in those nations, other people. We? Which have ever been reputed as nothing. They've always been known to be nothing. Have you be read the scripture all throughout history, these other nations, we've been in, this is our seventh captivity. Seven is completion. We're going to the numerology of the Bible. The Lord always talks about seven. Right? That's, that means completion. We're in captivity under the Egyptians, the Assyrians, uh, well, the Babylonians, Persian and Mede, the Greeks, the Romans, during the time of Christ, and right here in America, our seventh captivity. And spiritual Sodom and Egypt. You see that? We? And now, O oh Lord, behold, these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us. Now they lords over us. Now we got a march in bed for 400 years in order for, for them to stop killing us. You see that? The Lord never told us to do that. Right? Go ahead. And to devour us. Now they devouring us. Go ahead. That's it on that. Read what you got. This is the book of First Samuel, second chapter, third verse. Talk no more, so excellent, excellent proud, exceedingly proud. So the Lord said, don't talk no more, exceedingly proud. All people kind of proud. You know, people say, I got a relationship with God. I'm saved. You already saved, but you get killed in the street. You got to buy water. You got to pay rent. You subject to payment, right? If you already saved, what the Lord need to come back and redeem you for? Right. Then when you put the ED at the end of the world, what does that mean? It already happened. Past tense. You see that? We ain't saved. We, can't, we don't even know if we're going to make it. But we can hope for salvation because we're doing the work. Right. You see that? We we hope to be that number. That's why we fear the Lord. And that's why we make sure we do everything we can to line up with these scriptures. So we don't want to hear the Lord say, move from me. I never knew you. Because you're going to be saying that to a lot of people. So you got to make sure you're not in that number. Go ahead. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Let me Proverbs 27 and 1. The Lord said, don't let arrogancy come out of your mouth. We should always be humble. The Lord said, why is earth and ashes proud? You see that? Go ahead. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Our lip service. Actions are weighed. The Lord already know everything. So we kind of lie to each other and fool each other. But the most high seeing all that. Right? The, the angels record everything. You see that you know how Esau got the phones, the social media. He kind of watching everything. He got the cameras at the lights. He got cameras out here. He kind of watching you because he wanna be like the most high. The most high watching him when he see everything that we do. Angels are recording us every second. Right. You see that? Go ahead. That's why it's important to repent and get our sins blotted out. So when we stand before the Lord, we have a blank slate. No, that's no, no, nothing to charge us. Go ahead. The bones of the mighty man. I broke to verse. Uh, Proverbs twenty-seven and six. Proverbs twenty-seven and six. Proverbs twenty-seven and six. Proverbs 27 and 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. Now the police. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. So the Lord kills. Right. The Lord kills. Read this real quick. Let me show you something. Let me show you real quick. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 1. This is for Christians that say they already saved and all uh, this. Read this. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Don't boast anymore. We don't know what the Lord thinks about us. Right? Don't boast. We should be humble and pray. Because when you get proud and you kind of get com comfortable, you stop praying. You know, you kind of ain't praying every day. You ain't fasting. Yeah, I ain't got to fast no more. I'm under the blood of Jesus. I'm under grace. Well, grace runs out. If the phone company give you a grace period, you didn't have your money to pay your phone bill. And he give you by this date. If you don't pay by this date, if he gonna keep your phone on, they gonna cut it off. Grace is up, buddy. So that's when the Lord is coming back with fire. That's why he coming to get, in that case, if Christianity was the truth, then there wouldn't be no need for him to come back and judge. Because everybody already said what they believe. They said it. That's why the Lord said, actions are You gotta do something. Right? We For that, uh, Salakia, boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You don't know what's going to happen to you when you walk down the street. You can get hit with a straight bullet. You talking about you were saved and, you know, somebody ran in your house and killed Lil' Ray Ray. And everybody crying. Oh, Ray Ray, he was such a good person. No, he wasn't. That was judgment from the Lord because the Lord killed. Read that again, sir. The Lord killeth and maketh the lie. The Lord can kill you and make you alive. We're trying to make you alive with this word right now because this is a quickening spirit. Right? You being made alive right now by coming back to this truth. Read. Really? He bring it down to the grave. He bring it down to the grave. Go ahead. And bring it up. The Lord make it poor. The Lord do what? Make it poor. You see all our people out here poor. The Lord did that. The Lord make them poor and homeless. You think you did it. I just chose to. No, the Lord does that. Read. Really? And rich. And the Lord can make you rich. Rich in spirit. You see that? 
The Lord make it poor and make it rich. He bring low and lift up. He brought the 12 tribes low. And he lifts up. So the Lord do all these things. But what? He raises up the poor out of the grave and lift out of the dust and lift up the beggar from the do here. Down here. He lift the beggar up of the dog is doo The Lord will lift the beggar up out of the dog here. Right? And that's all spiritual. The poor in the Bible, when you go into the purpose of Christ, Lazarus, that represents the Israelites. The rich man represents the other nations. Because they got it. They got your inheritance right now. They rolling over you. The Lord is getting ready to raise us up. That's what he's doing now. That's why brothers like us is out here. Right? Trying to and you see, that's how you know wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And that they see y'all the only two up here. You see, the Lord said many are called, but few are chosen. It's not no you ain't gonna be in the church with twenty thousand people in the congregation. Christianity is the number one religion on the earth. That that's the wide gate. This is the narrow gate. Out here on these streets. You think T Jack's gonna get out here in the rain, man? Right? And, and teach the people the truth of the Bible? No. Do what you got. Uh, uh, book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 70. As he spake by the mouths of his holy prophets. He's talking about salvation. He's going to show you what salvation is. All right? So nobody can say they saved by Go ahead. Book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Wait a minute. God of everybody. God of Israel. God of these people. Go ahead. God of Israel. See, the nations, when you read the Bible, they make their own God. They know that they, they God is not in the Bible. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Israel. Our God. That's why he deals with us as we sons. You know, they kind of got it. Hey, brother, you got to repent. Let me first put this six and nine. You're an Israelite. And you can't be effeminate in these last days. Right. Give me Isaac, first Corinthians six and nine. Hurry up. Get it. If you can get it fast. Right? But you got to man up. Can't be a homosexual, man. Read this. Book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The unrighteous is not going to inherit the kingdom. Read. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, what? nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. No what? Effeminate. No what? Effeminate. No effeminate. No effeminate. No effeminate. No what? Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Right? He's not going to get in the kingdom of heaven, man. Right? So is the world going to tell them that? Who's going to tell them that, man? Give me Isaiah 58 and 1. So it's our job to tell our people that's love, man. We love our brother, man. Nobody tell him that he's going to die in his sin. But they tell you in the world that the laws are done away with. You can do what you want to do. Just believe on Jesus. It don't work like that. So we got to rebuke him sharply, man. Read this. Isaiah 58 and 1. Come on, read this. Isaiah chapter 58 and 1. Uh -huh. Cry aloud. Do what? Cry aloud. We are here crying aloud. Do what? Spare not. We can't spare the brother just because oh, we don't want to embarrass him. You know, don't, don't, don't do that. That ain't right. No, the Lord said don't spare nobody's feelings. Because if you do that, you hate your brother in your heart. Do what? Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. The trumpet is the loudest instrument. Lift up our voice like a trumpet. That's why Christ had the voice of many waters. So he was loud. He wasn't sleeping and feeling it like Joe Osteen. No, he was loud. Because something's at stake here. Life and death. Give me Jeremiah 8 and 2. Read this. Show my people their transgressions. He said, show my people their transgressions. Because they don't know. The world told them they don't have to follow the law. Read. And the house of Jacob their sin. And the house of Jacob their sin. We just have to show the brother that the world told them we all going to be saved. But the Bible said you can't even be, even if you ain't homosexual, you can't even be feminine. You can't be in the kingdom with some effeminate man. You see that? All uh, extra saucy. No, you got to man up and be a man. Gird up your noise and be a man. Right? Give me First Kings 2 or 3. Read this. Is it on that? 2 or 3. Right? What do, you, what do we mean when we say these things? Right? And Lord, really, we plant the seed and the brother go home and think about it. Right? Go ahead. Because you see, behind you, they, they took our Lord's rainbow. That we, in Genesis, the ninth chapter, the Lord made a covenant that he wouldn't destroy the earth with the flood no more. He's going to deal with fire this time. But look what they did to it. They made it a damn symbol for homosexuality. Because wickedness is exceedingly great in the earth. You see that? They didn't do that. They made, they, they're making it known that. Spiritually, right, but physically, that is homosexuality. Put in a rainbow and Google it right now. You're going to see that. We were just out here for the, for the gay, gay pride. Right? Right. Let me see rainbow flags everywhere. Read this. 
Book of First Kings, chapter two, verse three. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. This is what we really tell them through the Spirit. We will say, man up. Keep the charge of the Lord. Go up before that. One. One. Yep. This, this is King David, our forefather, before he died, and he saw his son. The last thing he said. Now the days of David drew nigh. And we the seed of David. We. Really? That he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, um, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. He said, Be strong and show thyself a man. Now we're going to find out what being a man is. Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies. And it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all, the, in all that thou mayest. In Leviticus 20 and 13, let's go to the law. Right? Because people come and say, oh, y'all judging. They'll say, we wrong. The world will persecute us for what we just did to that brother. But we're showing you that's love. Being a man is keeping a commandment. So let's read a commandment. Leviticus 20 and 13. Book of Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lies with womankind, both of them have committed an abomination. What's the penalty? They shall surely be put to death. See that? So we're trying to save his life. In Ezekiel 3 and 17. That's our job. That's what the preacher should be doing. Not talking about come as you are. Not one of those pastors can show me no way in that Bible where it says come as you are. And that's what we're telling you, brother. You can't come as you are. You can't be like everything is okay. I ain't doing anything. I'm fine. The Lord will accept me as I am. The Lord will accept me with his graven images. You see that? Go ahead. Paul did to the brother. It's in Proverbs 27 and 5. Huh? Open rebuke mm -hmm. is better than secret love. Hey, open rebuke. Do the world teach that? Uh, you embarrass me. Open rebuke is better than secret love. That's how you know I really love you. I ain't gonna hold my tongue and let you sit there and be in sin. I'm gonna tell you, brother, because that's better than somebody secretly loving you. They ain't really gotta do nothing. They can kind of just say it. So you got a wife and you say, I love you, bro, but you cheating on her. You really love her? Oh, you love her in secret. You don't love her openly. Open rebuke is better than secret love, bro. Right? Book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Now we teach you how to love. This is how we love one another, our neighbor as ourselves. Go ahead. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So we're supposed to no matter what, rebuke our neighbors. Right? We're going to show you that like your neighbor is not everybody on the earth. It's going to tell you that. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. And not what? Suffer sin upon him. I see that a flaming faggot walk by that's on, uh, that's on this chart. I'm suffering sin upon him. Because I don't know if he heard this before. So I got to tell him again. All right? I can't suffer sin upon my The Lord will judge me because I know the truth. Wait. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. See that? The children of thy people. So you can't hold the grudge against me. I can't. You can't do something to me. Hey, Elder came and apologized one day. We said we don't remember that. Because right. I ain't holding the grudge against my brother. Well, I love my people. Hey, the Lord said you're supposed to forgive your brother seven times seven. And seven just compulsion. You don't mean just 70 times. It means you gotta forgive another time. Because we need forgiveness. I can't ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins. And, and the Lord already knows, brother, you can kind of hold the grudge for five years. Talk to your brother for five years. But we'll forgive, we'll forgive the damn white man. White man come shoot your mom in the face and you go on the news the next day and say, I forgive him. Now you want to bring up God. But your sister do something. We know it in our family. We see it all the time. They hold a grudge against each other, man. Because we hate each other. But the Lord, what father wants his children not to love each other, not to be together? See that? That's why the love punishes like you know. Go ahead. Brother Matthew chapter 6 verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. See that? If you forgive your brother, I'm pretty sure some people are there's some messed up stuff in the New York kind of deal with them no more. Right? But the Lord said you got to stop for you. Stop for them. But for yourself, salvation. You got to work out our own salvation. Give me one. Give me two. What? What? If ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's something they don't teach in that church. The Lord, you, you're, not, you're not going to get forgiven, man, because you got that grudge on you. You still got that beam in your eyes. Right. You see that? So forgiveness is a major part of salvation. Right? We kind of overlook that part. You know what I mean? Go ahead. Fulfill ye my joy. That ye may be like mine, have the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. That nothing be done through strife, right? Or vain glory. But in lowliness and holiness, right? See, a lot of times people do stuff, 
you know, you got the Edomites, they come out here and they, they bring them food and stuff. You know, we be out here, just see, we out here, they come to they kind of blowing each other. They're not doing it in, uh, they just want people to see them doing it. Man, they get a tax. They go take the down, uh, what they did, they mark it down, and they go get a tax right off of it. When they donate clothes and all the stuff they do. First of all, you stole every damn thing. They owe you everything. You see that? But this is how you're supposed to do it, go ahead. But in the loneliness of mind, let each other esteem each other, each other better than themselves. Better than themselves. So you gotta put your brother down there over you. That's love. You see that? Now, you think we don't got nothing else to do? They come out here, right? Because we love our people. This is our job. Read this. Book Tell them all, brother. Tell them all. Read this. Book of um, Psalm chapter 119, verse 59. You, you hear this, right? But it's important in these last days. Right to kind of step it up. We gotta, you can't just let it go to one end out the other. You gotta take heed. I thought of my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimony. So you heard that you gotta think on your ways and now you gotta turn your feet to the testimony. Go ahead. I made haste. Do what? I made haste. You gotta, gotta hurry up, brother. Right? We don't know if we're gonna make our, take our last breath. And hey, they killing niggas left and right. Live and direct on live TV. And the Lord said, give me uh, uh, 2 Peter 4 and 7. Go ahead. And delay not to keep thy commandments. You heard, don't delay because you didn't know this before. So the Lord kind of give me access to the picture. The Lord kind of have mercy on me. Because when we go to church all our life, they don't, they don't, they don't teach us what sin is. They can't teach you what sin is and teach you the law, don't they? Because sin is a transgression of the law. See that? Book of Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Uh -huh. And the time of this ignorance, God winked at. See the Lord winking your ignorance. That. You ain't know nothing about the brand of him. We, you know, Big Mama kind of got the cross and the white Jesus in the house. We don't know no better. We was raised like that. So we discontinued from our heritage. We were scattered throughout the four corners of slavery. And we learned the works of the other nations. And we worship their gods and their religion. That you don't find in this Bible. Go ahead. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Now, that's why the Lord got the men on the streets now. Now you got to repent. Because now the truth is out. Now the Lord is about to start bringing judgment. The other judgment was just the judgment of the curse. Right? Now we're about to come into delivery. Now the Lord is about to destroy this place and deliver his people. So now it's time to repent. Read what you got. First Peter 4, 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin in the house of God. So the judgment begin. Who is the house of God? We read it earlier. Who is God's people? We are. We're right. the tabernacle of right. right? The church is the people. We're at church right now. You see that? So judgment starts with us. That's why we get put together. Amos Amos 10. That's why the Lord is killing us in the street. That's why you got black on black crime. You see that? That's the Lord judging. The Lord kills. The Lord is judging two thirds of our people. Because two thirds ain't gonna make it. Only one third gonna make it. We try to compel you. We damn near trying to force you to come into this truth and keep these commandments for taking them aside. Go ahead. And if it first depends at us what the end shall be of them that obey not gospel of God. So if it starts with us that know the truth, what you think the end gonna be those that, that don't obey? It's gonna be utter destruction. Fire brimstone. You see that? Go ahead. Look at Amos chapter 3 verse 2. You, this is why judgment begins with us. I'm gonna start from 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. So not, you know this whole Bible, we keep reading about the children of Israel. We ain't talking to nobody else. Why we never know this out of our life? You see that? Go ahead. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. All 12 tribes under the curse. The whole family, not just Judah. Go ahead. Saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. He only know us. He created everybody, but he only know us. Read. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. So if you got a son and he's going out, you're not going to punish your friend. You're going to deal with your child. Because he know the rules of your house. He gave us law statutes to come out before him. So he punishes us. So to avoid the punishment, give me Proverbs 72. Right? To avoid the punishment, we gotta keep the commandments. Christians call us Pharisees because we teach the law of the commandments. You see that? Because they don't want to keep no commandments. The Pharisees were just hypocrites. They was teaching the law and wasn't keeping it. Book of Matthew chapter 23, verse 2. So if we are if we even if we are Pharisees, you still supposed to listen to them. He ain't supposed to uh, persecute us and rebuke, uh, rebuke us. Watch what the Lord said. Verse 1. Then spake Yahweh to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, 
the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. What? All therefore, whatever they they bid you, whatever the, the Pharisees tell you, you observe that observe and do. Observe and do what they're telling you because they ain't lying to you. They tell you the truth. Go ahead. But do not be after their works. But don't do what they do. For they say and do not. Because they telling you, but they ain't doing it. So the Pharisee was just hypocrite. So do what they tell you to do means do the law. Go ahead. Book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. See, the Lord didn't come to destroy the law or the prophecies that's written in the prophets. But what? I, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Read that again. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So he came to fulfill. And church, they closed the book. They used that to justify they ain't got to do the law. He fulfilled the law. So Christianity teaches like this. The Lord didn't come to destroy, but he came to destroy. Because they used fulfill as the story. Right? But let's see, we want to find out what he came to fulfill. Luke 22, verse 24. Luke 24. So what we doing? We breaking it down to the precepts and showing you what the, the Bible is saying. It's not saying what the church is saying. Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which was written in the law of Moses. See? He said all things that he spoke to before it must be fulfilled that are written in the law of Moses. Go ahead. And in the prophets, and in the prophets, and in the psalm. And stop right there. So he said in the law of Moses, let's go get a prophecy that will must be fulfilled. Deuteronomy 18, 18. But Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. Uh -huh. I will raise them up a prophet. The Lord said he's going to raise them up a prophet. Go ahead. From among their brethren. From among our brothers of Israelites. Like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command them. You see that? You mean uh, John 7 and uh, 16. So he's talking about Christ. Only talked about Christ before he came. So Christ said, I came to fulfill what they said in the law. Ooh. Read this. John 7 verse 16. Because he said he's going to speak whatsoever I put in his mouth. The most high. Read. How shall I answer them and said, my doctrine is not mine. So Christ didn't come with no new doctrine. Like the Christian says it. Come on, that's the old thing. No, he's speaking the same thing. His doctor, not his. Who is doctor? But his that sent me. But his, give me my verse 4 and 2. What were we saying there? My verse 4 and 2. But what? But his that sent me. Who sent, who sent the Lord? The Most High, the Father. So his doctrine is the same as the Father. The same Most High that gave Moses law, statutes, and commandments to give to the children of Israel. He gave Yahweh the same thing to give, give up, except he came with grace. You see that? In the law, certain things you did, you would get put to death. You don't got to get put to death. Brother, just repent. I'm going to show you in the law, brother. You can't go out graving images. Now don't do it no more. You see that? That's great. Read this. Now yeah. read this. this is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. Uh -huh. For I give you good doctrine. He said his first doctrine wasn't his. His doctrine was the most high doctrine. So the most high gave us a good doctrine. Read. Not uh, forsake not my law. Do what? Forsake be not my law. Don't forsake the law. But Chris is telling you to forsake the law. They say you can eat pork, you can do what you want to do, right? Church is on Sunday, not the Sabbath, but you ain't got to keep the Sabbath on here. God don't change. Go back to Luke 24. Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which was written in the law of Moses. Just read something that was fulfilled in the law of Moses. Okay? All right? And he spoke what the Lord told him to speak. Read. And in the prophet. Let's go to a prophet. Isaiah 53. And 7. He was oppressed. Uh -huh. And he was afflicted. Right? Yet he opened not his mouth. Right? He is uh, brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Who's, who's the, uh, the lamb? Right. The house child was the lamb. Right? And as, Behold, the lamb of God. Go ahead. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Right. And who shall declare his generation? 
for he was cut off out, out of the land of the living. Wasn't the Messiah cut out of the land of the living? He died for it, right? Go ahead. For the transgression of my people. Nobody else died for the, no man died for the transgression of God's people. He don't say everybody. He said my people. Go ahead. Was he stricken? He was stricken for us. Go ahead. And he made his grave with the wicked. He made his grave with the wicked. Right? And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. So he came to fulfill what was done in the law and in the prophet, read, and in the psalm. And in the what? And in the psalm. Psalm 22. So we're showing you what he came to fulfill, precept upon precept. Go ahead. 22 and uh, I think 18. Go ahead. Look at, um, Psalm chapter 22, verse 16. For dogs have compassion. Uh -huh. The assembly of and the, the dogs, the dogs of the other nations. When you read the scriptures, the other nations know this. That's why he told the woman, uh, it is not good to take the children's bread and feed it to the dogs. Because this bread, this Bible is our bread. It's our knowledge enough. That's why we can break down the Bible. Huh. You see that? They dogs. Go ahead. The assembly of the That's why when the white man come up, we say keep it moving, it's not for you. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. Uh -huh. They pierce my hand. They did what? Pierce my hand. Whose hands was pierced? Why is King David talking about his hands being pierced? That's talking about a prophecy of the Messiah that he came to fulfill. Go ahead. And my feet. And his feet was pierced. Read. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them. They did what? Part my garments among Remember, them. Remember, didn't they part his garments? Rip his garments? He's talking about the hell He came to do that for us. And cast lots upon my yeah. vesture. They did Acts 3 and 8. Acts chapter 3 verse 18. Uh -huh. But those things which God beforehand showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. See that? He came to fulfill the things that he suffered. Now go back to Matthew 5. This is the understanding. So you still got to keep it. He's talking about the law. He had to come and fulfill these. Because guess what? All things ain't fulfilled yet. Because he still got to come back and kill a lot of people. You see that? But verily I say unto you, you know 17, think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy but to fulfill. Now does it make sense? He came to fulfill everything that we just read about him before. Go ahead. But verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. And heaven and earth pass, and we still on earth, and we still can see the heavens, right? Go ahead. One jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law. Not the least thing of the law is not going to pass. So you still got to keep the law. So right after, before time to close the book, and everybody ah, amen, because we don't read. If you keep reading, it's going to tell you that it's not talking about the laws are done away with. Read. Till all be fulfilled. Till all, all has been fulfilled. They still got to come kill these white people. See that? Go ahead. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of the least commandments. Hold on. He said if you break one of the least commandments, the simplest of like, what you say. Go ahead. And shall teach men so. And they teach you in the church. They don't keep the commandments. Passed up there with a bald head. Right? That's why we call them Pastor Pork Chop. And you got your eating that pork man, at the barbecue. Go ahead. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. He's going to be least in the kingdom of heaven. All right? Then he'll get in. Go ahead. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. If you do the commandments and you teach your people, you're going to be great in the kingdom. See that? So we got to keep the commandments. You understand that? It makes more sense now? You got any questions? You got any questions? All right, so let's do Can we get the commandments? Give me extra 20 and 8. All right. We're going to break it down. You know about the Saturday. How do you keep the Sabbath at home? You know? Right, right. Nah, so. That has to do with fasting. Oh, you can eat. You can eat all the time. You just can't cook it. Okay, can't, can't kill them the fire. So we, have, we prepare our meals before the sun goes down. 
So from Friday to sundown, the Sabbath comes in. So Saturday, so when the sun goes down tonight, the Sabbath is up. You see that? There's no buying, no selling. You see that? So we can't go buy nobody food. That's why we bring food already ready. You see that? And it's no work. And you got to congregate. Right? The Sabbath day is a holy congregation. You got to gather with your brother. So if you see us out here every week, you can keep the Sabbath just by coming and listening. Right. Gathering with your brother. Come here listening to the word. Come here to the word. Come here to the word, sister. Y'all know y'all nationality? Y'all know y'all nationality? What's your nationality, sister? Huh? Y'all believe in the Bible? Yes. When did the Lord call somebody a Haitian or Filipino? When did the Lord call somebody Haitian or Filipino? And that's confusing. You can't be two things. Who's the Israelite? Give me Matthew 15, 24. Give me Jeremiah 15, 24. This is why we out here, brother. We out here for those things. All right? There's a Matthew. This is what this is Christ is talking about, bro. We just get that you hate you. You can't find that in the Bible. Lord. The Lord, how you create 18 nations of people? Oh, everybody got names. The Lord said that's no end of the people. So where the hell are the other if the white man is the Jewish in the land and they say they're Levites, where are the other ten tribes? The eleven tribes. Do they just die off somewhere? You see that? That's confusing. They don't know no other thing. That's all they know. Read this. Look at Matthew Come chapter 15. Come on, they leave you. The that's Haitians, those sisters are from the tribe of Levi, brother. You see that? The Haitians are the Levites. Read. Look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered. Read up a little bit. 21. Then Yahweh went then and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. You My see. This Canaanite woman knew that he was the son of David, and she came. This is not an Israelite, it's a Canaanite. Go ahead. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples. Why, why didn't Christ answer her? If, if this is white Jesus, the one they tell us about, the white man that's on this thing right here, he would have took the money. Probably stuck rubbing on her back, pulling on her. Right? Read. But he answered not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. Then she came to the disciples because the Lord was ignoring her. He didn't say, Lord, why are you ignoring this woman? Salvation is for everybody. You're here for everybody. They knew this. They said, send this woman away. She's crying out for us now. Go ahead. For she cries after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. See that? He said, I ain't here for them. I'm only here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because you had people that think they was Greek, calling themselves Greeks during this time. So they were Hellenized. Right? You had people of uh, Romans that were Israelites who were scattered off. Give me James 1 and 12. Nah, keep going on that. Keep going on that. Nah, just keep going. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered her and said, It is not neat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Why are you calling this woman a dog? She wasn't Israelites. She was a leader. It's the Messiah. You need to tell me they don't read that in church. Read this. This is Jeremiah 15, verse 6. 15, 15, 15. Right. 15, 15. Right? So who are the lost sheep? People who think they're begging, people who march it, begging, the people who stop killing them, man. Begging for good. See that? The lost sheep. This is Jeremiah 15, 6. Uh, uh, My people has been lost sheep. Hold on, we gotta get to the top. My people has been lost sheep. God's people have been lost sheep. My is a possessive pronoun. If I say my, I'm not talking about everybody. If this is my book, it ain't yours. If that necklace is yours, it ain't mine. See that? Our is what terms we use, or all. Not my, and their. See that? Okay. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Who are that shepherds that caused them to go astray? These pastors in the church. You see that? And they teach them white supremacy Christianity. You see that? Those girls say they believe in the Bible, so they obviously know about the Bible, go to church, but they disregard it. Because they haven't been taught the truth of it. 
because they should have known that they were the Israelites. That's why we gave you milk first. That's why the first thing we ask our people, what's your last time? You see that? We don't just come out and you need to repent. You see that? We ask them who they are because that's the milk. First, you got to know who you are. You got to know who your God is, what he requires of you, and what happens. Why are you in the condition that you're in? Then you learn that you got to change because this is why it happens to you because you broke the commandment. We broke the contract with the Most High. We put the curse on it out of the country. But the Lord said he wouldn't be angry with us. They have turned down a way on, that, on the mountain. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. We forgot our resting place, which is Yahweh, the name of the Lord, the Most High. Now we seek the white man and the government and the mayors and the, everything but the Lord. We seek out the you know, you out there voting. We ain't supposed to be voting. That's against our commandment. Our king is Yahweh Shai, man. Right? right. That's the only king that Israel got. Let me start on up. Let me start on up. Go ahead, man. All that find down have devoured down, and everybody that found us destroyed, they divide, they take advantage of us. You see that? Go ahead. And their adversary said, we adversary is enemy. This is what our enemies are. We offend not. They say they leave, they ain't wrong. They put these niggas in slavery, and then let them free, and then put them in the ghetto. Not give them reparations. See that? Go ahead. Because they have sinned against the Lord. They know. They know that they're only doing this because we broke the commandments. But we don't know this. These are the secrets, the world's best kept secrets. Why do you think that the World War III is going to happen? Because everybody knows who the Jews are up. Right? They pay that land over there over trillions of dollars to keep the secrets. Go ahead. The habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Uh huh? Oh yeah, Book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. For well, the priest's lips should keep knowledge. You see, the priest led us astray because they were supposed to keep knowledge. What? A lot of people think these, a lot of these prophets, they go to seminary and school, they got degrees. They got a lot of knowledge, right? They got a lot of letters with degrees. Some of them doctors. You got doctor, reverend, name, mason. You know what I mean? Go ahead. But they don't got knowledge of the truth. Read. And they should and they should seek the law at his mouth. They supposed to be teaching the law out of their lips. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hope. Because he's supposed to be the messenger of the most high. He tell you the laws are done away with, but then he makes you pay time. <laughs> what time? That's a law. It's a law. For the Levites. Book of Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 21. I have not sent these prophets. The Lord yet, said he didn't send those people. Go ahead. Yet they ran. I have not spoken. But yet they ran their ass in those churches, set up these churches, and they teaching everybody. But they didn't sit from them. Anymore. Go ahead. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. And they prophesied, like the Lord told me, the Lord told me this morning, and all that. The Lord ain't told you nothing, prophet. He ain't dealing with you. Go ahead. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my word, mm. then they should have turned them from their evil way. You see that? Do you see, see our women out there twerking? You got a church on every corner in our neighborhood. Every corner you turn, you got a uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church, Missionary, Methodist, Pentecostal, this, that, right, Mount Zion. And all this, you got people selling crack right around the damn corner from right. the church. You got people coming from the club Saturday night, and when well, you're supposed to be keeping the Sabbath day, and going into the damn wrong day in the morning. Talking about Jesus, Jesus, and amen. Right. You see that? Right? I'm going to read something to you to let you know that everybody knows. This is um, out of the book called The Nazi World War II. Right? These are the words of Hitler. Alright? This is what he said. The Americans have the jewels of God. The Americans have stolen God's precious jewels. What do you mean by this precious jewel? said the soldier. This is what the soldier has it. Because they demonized Hitler because of what he did. So, so called did to these so called fake Jews. You know, they, the Jewish Holocaust and all that, that they get a million dollars when they turn 18 for? America has stolen the Jews, the Jews of God. His jewelry, the Negroes. See that? They are the true Hebrews. What a foolish move and a direct challenge to God. You see that? When they put their hands on us, they made war with the Most High. That's why this place is going to be destroyed. And I'm showing you that they know this. And they plan on moving these false white Jews into the state of Israel. That's how in 1948, the damn white man got in our land. Now he's Israeli Jew-ish. You see that? Go ahead. 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 Go
see that? This is before they did it. Hitler was already telling them what they were about to do. That's why he was killing their ass, because he knew they wasn't the Jews. America is desperate in its attempt to win this war using atom bombs on Japan. America will destroy the whole world in its attempt to conquer it. When America, is Jew when America, its Jewish slave masters, conquer the world, because a lot of people don't know, the Jewish, the Jews, so-called Jews, they funded, yeah, basically they run everything. They funded the lumber for the slave ship. A lot of people don't know that history. The world and the world realized I was right. Then all nations will begin a third world war to dethrone America of its rule. And the Bible tells you in Revelation about the third war. It means the last war, World War III. You see that? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is from Gamble Abdel. You will never be able to live here in peace because you left here black and came back white. See, that's the prime minister of uh, Palestine. That's what he said when they came in that land. So did you, give, me, give me my book. Okay. All right. See, okay. and we lining up history with the Bible. We've been reading all day in the Bible. And we're going to show you the history to prove it. Because Christ, give me Luke. And for all the Christians that say when well, Jesus came, then they came and now they're in the new covenant and all that, we're going to say that's a lie. Because Christ came and we did, we went into slavery after 1619. What the hell are we going to slavery for then? If everything they say is true. They, they, Christians, that's worse than crack cocaine. And I'm sorry, like, we come to this truth and we try to go tell our people, we understand that. Um, oppression and white supremacy is the worst thing, man. Mental, that's why the um, Willie Lynch, I don't know if you it's a book yeah, called Willie Lynch. Right. To how to he, put, he put the light skin against the dark skin and all that. Go ahead, you can go. What are you doing? Like, like, what are y'all doing to the white man? Right, right. Right, he set this up the way we think now. They started planning that then, and he took that, that uh, guideline gave it to all the slave masters, right? And that was happening on the island, and then they brought it on here to America. So they, that's why the black woman is uplifted over the black man. They even got things set in place, like, uh, what's it called? Section 8. Well, Eve, she got to put the man out, because you going to mess up my benefit. So Jake out there, he gets jammed up by the white man. He get put in there, you a deadbeat. Now you in prison for something you didn't do for 50 years, and your kids grow up hating you, thinking you wasn't there for them. See that systematic oppression? Right? Hillary Clinton and uh, Bill Clinton came with that mass incarceration. That was, we filled the prison. That's why the Bible says my people are hidden in prison houses. All those prisons are filled with our brothers. Right? Go ahead and read this. Babylon 10 bucks 2. And I'm going to show you we're not asking. During the period from Pompeii to Julius, it has been estimated that over a million Jews fled into Africa. Flee, where, where, where we flee to? Uh, fled into Africa fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. Listen to history, they know these things. It wasn't no white Jewish thing, it was the real Jews. We, and we're gonna read it out of the Bible. We fled into Africa, we're not Africans. Fleeing Roman persecution. The African, that land man is known as hell. He can read it. Oh, he got it right there, oh, we got the book right there. So we're gonna show you the Hamites, they have we don't come from Ham. The white we didn't we didn't become African until 1980. You know that? So our, our forefathers are older than our nationality. Because what were we before the 80s? Niggas, Negroes, colored. And look, if, if we was African, why they wasn't calling us African? Why did they say uh white only and African? That? And we're going to show you niggas in the Bible. They were calling them niggas in. Go ahead. Uh, Ham. Uh, it's the Bible. Dinerin. Compact history. Ham. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood. Uh -huh. And one of eight persons to live through the flood. You know about that history, about the flood? The Lord destroyed the earth with the flood. And all the cells of Noah. Okay. That's what we're talking about. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So he... he Noah built the ark and saved his sons and their wives. Yeah. 
So the whole earth that you see today was all repopulated by those three men. All right, go ahead. He became the progenitor of the dark race. So Ham is the father of the dark race. Go ahead. Not the Negro. What? Not the Negro. So not the Negro. He ain't all fun. Go ahead. But the Egyptians, the Egyptians they are African. Ethiopians, African. Libyans, African. Canaanites. See that? We're not African. We ain't African to nothing to You got that on Oh, you got that. Okay. Hold that. Hold it. Book of Exodus chapter 11 verse 7. That's what the Lord says. But against any of the so children. Got, uh, a lot of nations are dark. They don't mean we're the same people because we're dark like that. The Asians, they the same. They look alike. The Japanese and the Chinese. But they, the world know they're not the same people. So why we got to be damn African? Uh, Exodus chapter 11 verse 7. Because we just read the Egyptians are African. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move in his tongue. A dog of the other nations. Nobody is supposed to be, they all asking for so None of them were supposed to be open their mouth and they're trying to be. Against man, against man or beast, uh, that ye may know how that the Lord does put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. The Lord put a difference between them. We ain't walking around with fish in our mouth, eat blood. We, we different. We got another spine. We better than everybody, man. Right? You see that? Read that a little bit. <laughs> Luke chapter 21, verse 21. We're going to show you the prophecy that Christ gave that we just read in the Babylon Timber 2. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, the mountains of Africa. That's why they told um, baby Jesus, he was born, they told Mary and Joseph to take baby Jesus. Pharaoh, I want to kill him. And he was a white baby, he can't hide around no damn Africa. You see that? That's how you know he look like us. So if Christ is telling them, we're going to have to get the hell out of Judea. Read. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Huh? And let them not. Uh, and let not them that are uh, in the country enter into it. For these be the days of vengeance. Uh -huh. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. All things that are written in the curses that we read earlier have to be fulfilled. It's talking about 70 AD. Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with children. Because in that time, if you have a child, it's going to be hard to maneuver. So the Lord said, you might get caught by one of these Edomites. You try to stay back and save your child. The Lord said, woe to them that are with children. Go ahead. And to them that give suck in those days. For there should be great distress and the land and drought upon this people. Uh -huh, go ahead. And they should fall by the edge of the sword. The Lord said we was going to fall by the edge of the sword. We were reading that. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive to all nations. We was going to go into slavery into all nations. The Arab, the Southern slave trade, right? The uh, Silk Road slave, the China man had a captivity. We built that damn child wall. You see that? We built those fields. We built this whole earth in various captivity. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Jerusalem was trodden down of the Gentiles. We ain't Gentiles. We the actual people on the book. They the Gentiles. Because are we in Jerusalem calling ourselves people on the book right now? No. We discontinued. So they can't be the real people. Got that addiction? Oh, no, no, no. To the time of the Gentile be fulfilled. To the time of the Gentile be fulfilled. We're still living in that time. Right? That's why we got to come out here and do the work. And brothers like you got to start keeping these commandments so we can get the hell out of here. Go ahead. What's uh, Jesus 13 4? 35 and 6. Book of Ezekiel chapter 35 verse 6. 35. 35. 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel. He's talking about the white man. He's talking. He don't want it. But they had a perpetual hatred. Perpetual means everlasting. They always gonna hate you. I don't care what they do. The Bible says they got a perpetual hatred. Read. By the force of the sword uh -huh. and by in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Even when it was done, they would they they went the Bible saying basically they went too far. They took it to the next level. Go ahead. Therefore, as I lift up the Lord your house. I will prepare thee unto blood. So the Lord is getting ready to prepare them unto blood. That's why America is falling, her economy is falling. The Lord is getting ready to destroy her. Go ahead. And blood shall pursue thee, since thou hast not hated blood. Because they don't hate blood. 
Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumians. Idumians is Greek for Edom. Which have appointed my land into their possession. Oh, what did they do in 1948? Appointed my land into their possession. They took the Lord's land, our land. Now they had all that. With the joy of all their hearts. With the joy of all their hearts. They pretty much doing what they want. They, they own all the banks. They own all the sports teams. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. With the spiteful mind. And they got the spiteful mind. They will never come and tell us the truth. To cast it out for a prey. See that? So we read in our history. So why? You know the next year. The East Indian man. The China man. They can't read this book. They relate to anybody who can't say. It's our history. So what they teach in the church, it don't match up with what the Bible says. That's why they pull one scripture and they preach for 10 hours. They start to rent. Huh. Talking about fresh prosperity. Ain't no prosperity. The Bible says death and destruction is coming to this place. You see that? So you done heard more precepts out of the Bible than you probably heard your whole life in church. Because they don't read the Bible. Their job is to keep us free. You see what I'm saying? Elder, you had a point earlier. What was you gonna say? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think I'm ready. You forgot? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm saying you about to say something. So, so sister, you gotta get my phone out there. So, sister, you know what you gotta do? Do you know what I'm saying? So, what's your nationality? Uh, you an Israelite, right? From the tribe of Benjamin, like Paul. Right? Give me uh, Romans 11 and 1. You got that? Mm -hmm. Okay, Romans 11 and 1. Right? So the sister knows she's an Israelite. So you got to put on the dress and start keeping it in the family. Right. All praise to the most high. Kind of slipped up a little bit. And it's like that in this captivity. That's why we. That's why you got to be around your brothers and your sisters. That keep the commandments because we're going to correct you. We're going to get on you. You know what I mean? This is Romans chapter 11 verse 1. I say then. Has God cast away his people? Because they said that Jesus cast away the Israelites and grafted everybody back in. Read. God forbid. You know, they kind of lying in the church. God forbid means hell no. He didn't cast away his people. Read. For I also am an Israelite. Paul well, said he an Israelite. So what's their problem with the Israelites? Go ahead. <laughs> of the seed of Abraham and the tribe of Benjamin. Paul was from the tribe of Benjamin. Right. So if Paul was here today, he'd be calling himself a Jamaican. And Paul is here today in the spirit. He's somewhere doing the same thing we do. Teaching the word. You see that? So sister, we gotta get you, you gotta come back. In these last days, man. But the Lord brought you up here today. You see us out here? You been out here before? Okay, okay. So you didn't think you was gonna be up here today listening to us, right? When you came out here to protest? I didn't Okay, okay. Go ahead. Book of Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 4 verse 9. Uh -huh. Two are better than one. See, you know anybody else in the truth? You kind of just been studying by yourself? Oh, you got a boyfriend? Yeah. Hey, you know, ain't no boyfriend in the Bible. He, uh, he's your husband? Well, we've been together for five years. Right. Okay, okay. Alright. But he know about this, right? Yeah. So we really need to be talking to him. Alright. You say he live in Maryland? I'm from Baltimore. Oh, you from Baltimore. Okay, okay. So I know y'all know out there about it. That's a good one. Yeah. My daughter lives in Baltimore. Up in Marlboro. Oh, yeah. That's where you live. That's where you live.
Hey, this class is gonna be out here, man. In the rain, man. Second Timothy chapter four, verse two. Preach the word. The Lord said what? Preach the word. Yeah, the Lord said go preach the word, man. Huh? Be in season. Be, be instant. Hey, we gotta be instant with this word, read. Out of season. In season when it's sunny. And when it's raining, out of season. Go ahead. To do, to do, and talk all uh, with all long suffering and doctrine. So we out here long suffering, man, in the rain, teaching our people. We love our people, man. See that? Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 5. Whoso keeps the commandments shall feel no evil thing. So no damn tornado can't touch us, man. Hey, the Lord make the tornado, man. You see that? The Lord make the hurricane. If you keep the commandments, you won't feel no evil thing. See, that's why we ain't scared enough for all the Because we've been out here teaching that it was coming. That's the, that's the, that's the all about it. A strange disease. The Lord already said he's going to do these things. 